So when you're working in Blender, you're often going to need to change your view around to get a different perspective on the model that you're working with. Now, we already know how to do that with our mouse. We can orbit, we can pan, we can do that. But sometimes you want to be a little bit more precise on what angle you're looking at. And it's nice just to be able to press a single button to get to that view. And that's where the number pad comes in. Now, if you're working on a laptop or you have a smaller keyboard, you likely don't have a numpad on your keyboard, and that's okay. It's important enough in Blender to have a numpad that they have a way of getting around that limitation. So if you go up to the edit menu, down to preferences, and then in this pop-up menu, come down to input, and you go to the emulate numpad, and you can turn that on, and then close that window. So let's talk about this numpad and what we can do with it. Now, if you're emulating your number pad, this might be a little bit uh, more abstract. If you have a numpad and you can think about the structure and the layout of the buttons, this might make a little more sense. If I press one, you can see that I get a view directly down the Y axis. If I press three, I get a view directly down the X axis. And if I press seven, I get a view directly down the Z axis. And that's pretty handy. Now, also pretty helpful is if I press nine, it's going to whip me around 180 degrees. So in this case, I'm now looking up the Z axis. If I go back to one. I was getting a little dizzy here. If I go to one. I'm looking down the Y axis. So I'm looking at the front of the monkey. If I press nine, I'll go to the back of the monkey. Pretty useful, pretty handy. Now, if I press eight, I'm going to start to rotate, which makes sense as the eight corresponds to the up arrow on the number pad. You can see I'm kind of rotating around like so. If I press four, I'll rotate in a different direction again, corresponding to the left arrow. And this can get a little confusing, and a little weird. I tend not to use the arrow keys all that much. I do use the one, three and seven a lot. Also on the number pad, you can use the minus to zoom out and the plus to zoom in. Pretty useful, pretty helpful. And there's still more numbers on the number pad that are useful. For example, here in this scene, you can see that there's two monkeys we can see a light and there's a camera over there and we'll talk about the light and the camera later. But maybe you want to just isolate your view. You've got too many things going on. So one way to deal with that is you can click on the monkey and then press the forward slash on the number pad and you get into local view. We're going to zoom in and if I zoom out. You can see that the monkey, the light and the camera are gone. We're just in the local view of this one particular object. To toggle back, we press it again and we can see all the objects in our current scene. Another really useful button is the period on the number pad. Now this is super useful when your view gets a little messed up. You can't quite zoom in. Sometimes the scroll wheel or the zooming gets stuck. And if you press the period, it'll zoom in and focus on whichever object you're selected. I end up using it all the time. So if you're keeping track, there's at least one button on the numpad that we haven't talked about, and that's the number five right in the middle of the number pad. Now, this one's a little strange. This one feels a little odd. And what this does is toggle between perspective mode and orthographic mode. Now, perspective mode, that's how you and I see the world around us. If there's an object that's farther away, it looks smaller. If it's closer, it looks bigger. It's pretty normal. And that's how Blender displays things by default. Now, orthographic mode means if an object's far away or if it's close, it's going to look whatever size it actually is. So if the objects are the same size, they're going to look the same size. If they're not the same size, they won't, which is really useful for comparing two objects or lining objects up from a distance um, when the perspective might make that really, really difficult. If I line myself up on the Y axis by pressing one, you can see I can see the one monkey here. You'll also notice that this is switched into orthographic mode for me. And if I zoom out, you can see that the two monkey heads are exactly the same size. If I press five to go back into perspective mode, you can now see that the monkey head on the right has gone back into the distance and now looks smaller. So it's kind of hard to tell. And that's where that five button that toggle into orthographic mode is useful. I can now see that these two objects are the same size. And so maybe I wanted to scale this down so it's half the size of the other monkey. And I can do that in orthographic mode pretty accurately and pretty easily. 